Yeah. They are, yeah. Right now. Yeah, say on the front. Thank you for coming. It's time to start. I'll make sure I do it after. All right, we're going to get started. So welcome. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I'm super excited to have one of our own today, Mary Yaku Brad. Um, but before we get on to Mary, I wanted to give a little shout out to Sarah Kubler and what's popping for the smell that you guys are all smelling. I was smelling it in my office like, oh my gosh, what's that smell? So anyway, thanks for being here, Sarah, with your delightful popcorn truck, popcorn cart. Yeah, awesome. All right, so we're going to talk with Mary today. So Mary, tell me how long have you been in real estate? I started eight years ago. Okay. So. All right, so eight years ago. What was the market like when you started? I don't remember. Um, it was not like it was the last few years, but it wasn't quite slow either. So, I mean, there was a lot of more for sale by owners back then, uh -huh. I remember. Um, so it was kind of, I think it was, if I remembered correctly, it was, it was, it was going between the seller and buyer's market. Uh-huh. So you that started point. at a decent time. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So how did you, what did you do before real estate for people that don't know? Um, right before in my whole life, not <laughs> well. <laughs> you can answer I've that however you want to. Way too many things. Um, before real estate, I owned my own painting business uh, in town, and um, I did that for three years. I just it was I was a one man show, and um, I I loved it. It kept me in shape, and I could do my own, work my own hours. So um, I did that for three years, and I had to get off the ladder because of health reasons. And um, so then I literally came kicking and screaming into real estate. So, but how did that happen? Like, did somebody... Yeah, well, April was in real estate before me for a year. Um, and Sandy Gerke was a good friend of ours. And they were kind of nagging me. April mostly was nagging me. And because I was like, I was applying at like Uline and all these places to get a job because I had to like, it was get off the ladder like suddenly. It wasn't like, you know, taper yourself off. So, and I was frustrated because I didn't want to work for someone and they were like, well, just do real estate. And I still was arguing with her. I didn't want to do real estate and I was still painting and I wasn't supposed to be painting. And actually you when I- You still sometimes paint when you're not supposed to be yeah, painting. Yeah, but I'm not very high. I know, because like she's done it all here. So thank you I'm not very high up, I'm not very high up. Um, but I, um, and I was, I was still painting when I started with Keller Williams. Because I had, I had to make money in between, right? Because right? it takes forever. And so literally we were moving. I was moving on May 19th. And so two weeks before the move, or three weeks before the move, April was like, here are your homework assignments. Two chapters a night. You're taking a test before you move or you're never going to do it. So I studied two weeks, took the test on my move. Like the moving trucks were at my house and I was taking a test. Wow. And so and that's... Just what happened? It's your story. Literally kicking and screaming. Did not. Uh -huh. no. Yeah. Yeah, so. I remember that. I do remember that. Yeah. Well, then you obviously my next question about fears that you might have overcome. Where did you have fears? Like, or what was your reason for kicking and screaming? You just didn't oh. think you'd like it, or? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I'd like it. Um, I didn't. Obviously, you get paid off commission, right? I was newly divorced. I had, you know, three kids. I'm like, how am I gonna put money on the table? How am I gonna pay a mortgage? with, you know, in real estate, mm -hmm. the same fears everyone has every yeah. year, like around January when that same fear comes back again. Am I going to have a good year? Yeah, uh -huh. that's yeah. what I had starting. Awesome. So what do you think was the biggest challenge, like when you first started? What do you remember, like, were some of your biggest challenges? So I think you've heard this story before, actually. Um, when I first started, there was a team leader in our office, and... For some reason, I don't know, she didn't think, you know, too highly of me. And so the first, I don't know how many, six months, maybe six months in, she told me that I should just quit the business because I'm not going to make it as a realtor. I do remember this story. Yeah. Yes. So um, I just kind of, no, I don't like people telling me can do, I can't do something. So that I'll was just the do fuel it even more. for you to... Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And every time I post something on Facebook, I just love it because I know she's seeing it. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you know, that so... That is awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was hard, though, because I... That's, you know, real estate is mental. 
if you don't if you don't mentally in the in the game, you you can easily just go home and pet your dogs or right. you know do the dishes and fold your laundry and do whatever you want to do. Not work a full day, right? Mm -hmm. And in this, so I easily could have done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I had no choice but to make it. Right. I mean, I There's first, no plan B. No, the, my kids' first Thanksgiving after I was divorced was with a card table at our kitchen table and a turkey breast and some mashed potatoes. I didn't want to do that again. Yeah. I didn't want to have that for them again. Uh huh. So. Yeah. That's like starvation's a good motivator. Yeah. Isn't I always that tell like, my coaching students there <laughs> starvation's a good motivator. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, so tell me about like your, um, well, you talk about the mental part of it. So how do you, on a tough day then, you know, now in today's real estate world, like how do you, how do you get through like a really tough day? I scream a lot. No. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I, we, there's a wall in between our offices, so I can, yeah. Zach's louder. Yeah, Zach, <laughs> Zach is louder. <laughs> Um, um, I'll, sometimes I'll put, like if I feel like I can't focus or just getting fresh with stuff, I'll put my headphones on while I'm at the office and just tune sure. out. Yeah, tune out. Um, mm -hmm. Or I'll just start, I don't know, I'll go lead generate out. Mm -hmm. I'll go what down, does that mean? I'll go downtown, go to some of the stores, you know, talk to some people down there because I do my best lead generating like in person. Mm -hmm. So if I get frustrated, I'll just get out of the office, but I'm going to make it useful mm -hmm. if I get out of the office, so I just go out and about and we'll lead generate that way for a little bit just to get, you know, maybe have some retail therapy in there too. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, so. that's actually a really good idea. I should make note of that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, so what does a typical day look like for you? Before Sarah gets in the office or after? <laughs> um, a typical day for me is um, well, I, get, I get in the office around nine. Um, usually in the summertime, I'll probably be in here like eight, eight thirty. Uh, I do. I start. I mean, I start lead generating right away, and it's not like the nine to eleven making phone calls lead generating. I've never done that. I know that they say we're supposed to do that, but that's just not how I'm successful. So, um, so I'm, I'm texting a lot. I'm talking to people. Um, I am, you know. April usually, usually has some assignment for me to get done when I get in, so I, I get, get that assignment taken care of, whatever it is, for whatever, um, ever, whatever we're doing with that lead gen process. And, and then um, I'm on the MLS and hunting down homes for my pipeline and you know making calls to people who I think might like a home. They might not even be buyers for me yet, but I just know how to, as they're talking to me or as they're thinking. I, for some reason, I have a knack to remember that. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, how do you keep track of that? Because if you're talking to a lot of people, so you just keep a mental I just, Rolodex? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird because I probably couldn't remember half the stuff in my life. But I can remember huh. what someone's looking for, even if they're not looking. Yeah, interesting. So, yeah. So. Huh. OK. Mm -hmm. All right, so your lead generation then. So like you said, you already mentioned, you know, you don't do it in the typical way. I know you're very plugged into the community. So like how much of your business actually comes from your sphere, people in the community, people you know, um, would you say? I actually have that written down so I can be more exact. Um, so my sphere and, and people I know is 70, 71% of my business is sphere. And then 17% is from agent referrals, whether it's from Minnesota or other uh -huh. States and then uh, my vendor partners is six percent and unsigned calls six percent. So, huh. okay. Um, so let's go deeper on agent referrals. So is that by accident? No, is that just happening I'll, for you? Bold, bold, and networking at bold. Pretty much all my agent referrals are through that. Um, some of it's by accident. Like they'll just kind of how we're looking for an agent in you know Omaha. Mm -hmm. You just. You know, the great thing about Keller Williams is that we have the network, right? right? So you can look up all the agents, see their production, see what they do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know, it must be my face. They like my face. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, so sometimes it's just by fluke. Uh-huh. Okay. So do you have a process for agent referrals? Like, what 
if I refer you as an agent, say I'm in, I don't know, Nebraska and I have a client that needs to buy here, how are you communicating with me? Um, I would communicate, you with, like, communicate with you like any agent that I'm working with uh -huh. on the other side. So obviously a little more because we have the same client in common. I would let you know if I have an appointment set. I kind of let them know step by step where we are in the process. So you have an actual system for that? Yeah. Okay. Just communication, uh -huh. you know. They appreciate that and mm -hmm. if they like working with you as a referral partner, they're going to refer you again. Yeah. So. Well, there's nothing worse than sending someone a referral and then being like, oh, I wonder if they ever bought. I wonder if the appointment ever mm -hmm. happened. Okay. It ha uh, it's happening to me now. I sent a yeah. referral down to Missouri, uh -huh. and I've not heard anything. I was just thinking about that today, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's almost like you want to teach them how to. Right. <laughs> or just give my license how to and accept go sell a, a guy How to home. accept a referral. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about your sphere of influence? Like how, like that's an incredibly high number to be getting from your sphere. Mm -hmm. How do you make that happen? Like what's, if I'm in your sphere, how are you Well, I communicating? I use the um, Michael Mayer's seven levels of communication, uh, customer appreciation plan, um, which is you do something each week. Um, so that's really my highest, my, the, probably the biggest way I communicate with them. I've been doing that since year two. Um, I used to have a big database, and April came back from this training and put this sheet in front of me, and she's like, do you think you can do this? And I'm like, hmm. I looked at it, and I'm like, I guess. I have no choice, right? Like, how am I going to, you know? And, um, but I had to reduce my, my numbers. My, my database. So I started, I reduced my database from like 3,000 people down to 250 people. And I started with that. And I, now I have like 321 in my sphere and another like 100 that I don't um, do consistently gen to, whether they've moved out of town or just mm -hmm. are, you know, I, I'll send them small things throughout the year, but. Well, like when you say send them, are you physically mailing? Are you texting? Are you emailing? What does that mean, sending? That from the out of town guests, I'll physically mail them something. Like oh. spring will come and I'll mail them like forget me not seeds or something uh -huh. in the mail. You know, for them to plant or. Where's Tracy? <laughs> Tracy was just saying we should send seeds. So, um, okay, it, it, it's cheap because it's still the same stamp. It's one stamp. Yeah. You don't right. have to, right. so. yeah. Um, okay, so those are for the out-of-town people. Mm -hmm. What about the in-town people? What are they getting? They get, um, well, they get, they get me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, but how do they get no, you? No, I'm, I'm just teasing. I mean, are you taking them to lunch? I'm, I'm, are you taking them to, I mean, like, I'm what does that them, look I'm calling them, I'm texting them. I take, I take my um, biggest cheerleaders, like my top 10 cheerleaders, I'll take them out to lunch or dinner or, you know, something like that. Um, at the end of the year, I send my top five referral partners gifts um so and even if it's my clients they'll get an extra gift mm -hmm. um i have this, the customer appreciation events i have mm -hmm. um we contact them we we have we contact them through phone email text handwritten letters and um i do that quarterly essentially so you have a quarterly client appreciation email yeah i mean it's much. more like three times but you know you do something around the holidays it's not necessarily like they're coming in because everyone's so busy. Right. So, um, so I do that. Yeah, and I mean, it's, my first one I had like 18 people, you know, but now um, any one of any one we do, I'm I usually have at least 100 and 100 or 150 who respond mm -hmm. in my sphere that they're coming, mm -hmm. whatever the event is. Well, and for those of you that are out there, and you heard her say only 18 people came to the first one. It's not about the event. Right. It's about the lead generation you're doing up until the event. Right. I mean, the event matters. So yes. Like yeah. Yes. It, it's it's the, the ability to be able to market to them and say, hey, we have an event coming up. And here's That's important. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like, I'll, when I was first started doing this, people would say to me, well, I'm, I'm not your customer. I'm not your client. I, my response was always, you're my friend. You're mm -hmm. someone I appreciate in my life. So uh -huh. you're on my list. Yeah. And I've had people come get something from me and they just sold their house with somebody else. Uh -huh. and, you know, most people would take them off the list. I don't, I just keep loving on them. Uh -huh. And usually what happens is they use me next. Right. So, and it's happened Or they a refer times. you maybe. Yeah, but 
specifically like this one situation, he used me next and again and again. And the reason why he didn't use me the first time was because I knew him, they were getting divorced and he didn't want anyone he knew in, their, in, in the middle of that. So instead of assuming, mm -hmm. I just kept, you know, right. sending him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's easy to get bitter when you're, you know, when someone you know and you feel like you have a really strong relationship with. You know? Yeah, there's nothing worse than driving by yeah. and seeing someone else's sign in that yard. I know. Oh or seeing on Facebook, hey, we're moving, we just closed. It's like, what? Yeah, it's, yeah. So um, for those people then, you it's basically a combination. Like you're inviting them to events, you're texting, you're calling, you're taking some of them to dinner, some not. And I, and, and I never ask for business. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking to them, I never ask for business. And, I, and it, it takes a lot of my energy when I'm actually being intentional about this for the events because I'm not just going to call them and say, hey, come to my event. Usually it's, how are you doing? How's so-and-so doing? Mm -hmm. What's going on? How's the cross? How's this? You know, yep. because I'm having that conversation with them. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like a business call. Right. right? It doesn't feel salesy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, events are a great way to call people and not make it feel like you're wanting yeah. something from them, for sure. Um, do you do Popeyes? Does everyone know what a Popeye is? So that's like, you know, she she has a little seed packet or something and you stop in. Like she said, visiting the people downtown. Do you do that? Like where you bring them little gifts um, to their office or anything like that? I know a lot of agents do that. No, but what I was doing, and I usually will still do that in the, this in the summer because again, I'll get antsy and I'll be like, okay, how am I gonna do this? I'll go on video them in their store and talk about their store yeah. on video and put it on Facebook. I usually do something like that. Mm -hmm. The quick little interviews with yeah. them. Yeah, okay. They like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Okay, oh my gosh, we've already kind of covered a lot of this. What, so what, what, what advice would you give, like you know now what you know, for anyone here who is maybe first couple years in the business, like what, what would you tell them Oh, I could tell them a lot. I used, I, t I used to teach a class on this in the market center. I don't know if you know that, um, what not to do when you first start real, in the real estate, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, or what to do or not to do, it depends. Um, definitely treat it like a business. If you don't treat it like a business, I mean, it is a business. You're running a business, so treat it like a business. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you have a separate bank account for taxes and save after each sale and put away for Uncle Sam first because at the end of the year, it's gonna hurt if you don't do that. It's very important. Um, I would say to uh, be in the market center or in your office or wherever you are working. Do not work from home if you can avoid it because you're more productive when you're around like-minded people doing like-minded mm -hmm. things, especially if you're part-time, which I think is the most difficult thing to do. Yeah. It's part-time real estate. It's way, it's, yeah, that's way hard. Um, I think some, I mean, I would lead generating, find your niche. I mean, I know that, I know that we, what we teach, you know, is do, is maybe eight to 11 isn't the best for your sphere. Maybe two to four, four is, or, you know, maybe, you know, find your niche, find what you, one thing that you're good at and focus on that and become an, a master of that one thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, move on to something else if you want to and know your numbers. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. So you guys noticed, like when I asked her about her, she had it written down, which means she has it somewhere. She's tracking it. So that's super important. Um, so as far as lead generation, then are you only lead generating to your sphere then? Pretty much. So like you don't make cold calls. You don't do you do open houses anymore? Um, if I, if I have to, I will. I'll uh -huh. ask my clients. You know, I I usually have my you know my agents do the open houses um, for me. However, if you're not comfortable with that, and you want me to do it. I'm happy to do it. Um, usually they're like, no, that's fine. I think there was only one that I made my, I made sure that I was doing it in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I haven't done them that much. <laughs> It was really rusty when I went to help Sarah that one week, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this in so long. But um, so most of my lead gen, yeah, is with my sphere out cold call, like during bold. You know, mm -hmm. if I want to get to a bold 100, I'm doing that through cold calling. Mm -hmm. Because if I, if I do it with my sphere, I'll never get through it. So explain what a bold 100 is and for the people that probably don't know. So a bold 100 is 100 contacts in one day. So 
you, not like leaving a voicemail. You actually have to have a conversation or that they at least call you back and say, don't call me ever again, you know. Um, and that's, you need 100 of, them, 100 of them in one day, and it's a bold 100. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do those here. Yeah. As a little competition. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, you got Last four in an no, hour. No, I got and six I got, that day. Oh, like in like an hour. And I, I got, know. I zero. We yeah. should totally do that again. Mm -hmm. We might have to do a market center wide competition, bold 100. Um, okay. So, what are you really good at that we should all learn from you? Um, I think getting myself out there, people knowing that I'm an agent. I mean, well, obviously, because yeah. of the way you dress. This is always, my, she's always branded. This is my daily attire. Um, not the same clothes, but <laughs> 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 different versions. <laughs> um, and, um, just I'm constantly talking about real estate. I was sitting down at a basketball, one of the last basketball games this year, and I don't know who sat down next to me, but he's like, so how's the market? I had no idea who he was. I'm just like, you know, it's great. You know, you're looking to buy? You know, uh -huh. just, I've found more clients, if, if it's not my SOI, the clients I find are usually when I'm walking through Menards or County Market. I had one from the counter at Family Fresh when, when it was open. Yeah. I mean, I was just buying some onions. You and know. people just walk up she and talk to you. She saw my jacket, and she uh -huh. said, oh, you're a realtor? Yeah. Oh, I, I've had people coming out to give me a market analysis. Oh. So you want to come out? I'm like, sure. You know? Oh. I also have my son who loves to advertise for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, he does do a oh really Oh, my good gosh. Job. I've gotten three mm -hmm. clients because of him. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. He will never be able to sell real estate visually, but maybe I should have him on my... You like, should, on, as an yeah, ISA or something, right. I don't is know. Like, is he licensed? No. No, but. You get 25% referral. I mean, yeah. He would. I don't think yeah, he'd Yeah, he'd go out, he'd go out to the whole town if, if he knew he was getting 25%. Uh huh. Yeah. I yeah. should get him licensed. That's you should. so smart. Seriously. You should. I think I'm going to get him licensed. Well, That's I smart. mean, okay, but you could probably, I don't know, you'd have to ask Matt, but you could probably bonus him up in some way without a license. Yeah, because he'd have to be 18, right? He'd have yeah. to be 18. Oh. So he's got, he's got like four more months or six more months, whatever mm. it is. I'm going. Yeah. He's what? Bonuses are illegal. Yeah. Oh, are they? Well, okay. There's no bonuses, but you know, he lives in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's bonus. Enough. I feed him. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, that would definitely motivate him if he knew he'd get 25% of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be scary. Yeah. That's funny. He is pretty much a walking billboard for you. Yeah. Uh huh. That's awesome. Um, okay. So, do you time block? I make every attempt possible, especially when it's really quiet. <laughs> Time blocking's hard. I struggle with that too. I'll do really well for a week and then it just goes to pot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Because something will happen, I'll get busy, something will start, you know, all of a sudden, boom. Uh huh. So you don't have like Monday's showing day, Thursday's listing day? No, I don't because. It never Listing works for me. Day. Like I'll be like, I know. Oh, you know, I can list on this day and this day. Oh, but are you available this day? What are you going to say? No. Yeah. Right. I'm well, sorry, especially but, in this market. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm available. What day do you want it? As I'm moving things off my calendar, like uh -huh. on that day, like. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, when I first started, I missed a lot of activities with my kids, because um, I had really had no choice, and um, but now at least as far as that type of time blocking goes. I don't miss my kids' activities right. for work, mm -hmm. so that's important. So yeah. like that, that and I do time block vacations and stuff like that in there. But daily time blocking, it's on my desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't get done it's in that really order. Hard. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, April, plus, tr April tries really hard. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So. Okay, so let's talk about like that a little bit because like you started, you kind of started as a single agent mm -hmm. and then you were on a team or mm -hmm. you actually kind of ran mm -hmm. sort of a team. Mm -hmm. So now you're back on your own mm -hmm. and you're growing a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what has that experience been like? I think, I think I have like the best of both worlds because I know how to be an individual agent. When I go into listing appointments, I can flip a switch which way I want to uh -huh. go with a team. I mean, I used to go in and say, this is why you don't want to work with a team. 
you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and now you're like, And now I'm like, oh. let me tell you why you should work with a team. Right. Yeah. Well, okay, so tell like, these guys, like, because there are some newer people in the room, like, if you are a single agent, what do you say? What do you say in a respectful way to say you don't want to work with a team? Because obviously we never want to mm -hmm. be disparaging. Well, when I was a newer agent, I would I would suggest that because I'm newer, I'm not as busy. So you're going to have me 100%. I'm going to be really aggressive and hungry to find you what you need or help you sell your home. So that's usually what I would say, something something to that, those lines. Um, you're going to get me and only me. There are some teams out there. My team runs a little differently, though. My team doesn't run like a normal team. Like not, I shouldn't say a normal team, like many teams. Um, as a single agent, I was always like, you're going to get me and only me. You're not going to have someone else talking to you or someone else doing this or that. Um, you know, and the individualism of having just one person t to talk to, mm -hmm. I, I would just kind of focus on that. So and then. Yeah, I did that for three years, and I was happy doing it, but what happened was I was so busy that I needed to hire an admin and probably needed to hire a buyer's agent, so I, was, I had no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know we have it in a book, and I read it, and I see it, but to actually implement it, I, my confidence level is not that high mm -hmm. for me to think I could successfully do that. So um, when I was talking to uh, Reed, and he asked me to, you know, be the director of sales of his team and grow my team within his team. I'm like, okay, you know, I thought about it. I thought about what it would mean financially and everything else. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll give this a shot. Um, and April came with me on that team. Um, so that was nice because she is really one of the only people who can speak Mary. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, it is. Oh my. Um, so, um, so I did that for a few years. And it was, people ask me if I regret making that shift. And I, I don't because I learned what to do and what not to do, right? And we learned a lot of systems uh -huh. that are team systems, not just my individual systems. So like to, if something were to happen and no one could come in the office but me for like a week, I could put my listings up, I could do all my paperwork because I did it as an individual agent. And a lot of people who start on teams have no idea what's mm -hmm. going on in the background, right? Um, so, um, so in being on a team, I had the leverage I needed to grow mm -hmm. myself and to grow people under me. Um, it was, yeah, it was difficult to do that. It was difficult to, to coach and, and grow people under me like that because it was, it was a lot. There was a lot. Um, so finally I decided to start my own team. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Scared out of my mind. But... But I did it. Great. Yeah. You're now I great. got a great team. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> April, you're funny. Um, <laughs> go team. Um, do you guys buy leads? We have um, lead generating things that we will pay 25 percent after a sale. Like a success fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you pay on the back end when yeah. you close the deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean. That's that's the most that's mostly what we do. Uh huh. Um, I've looked into some buying leads this year because of how it's been going out there. I mean, but still, all of our deals have been SOI and people we know and pipeline. I'm really big on pipeline on building your pipeline and holding on to it and knowing who's there because you forget people. Mm -hmm. At the end of each year, I write down I write down who like and we, I should say it and. I don't even know how to say this right. At the end of the year, I rewrite my pipeline. So I have my pipeline. This started, this started year one. So mm -hmm. if you can understand, I had the pipeline. So is it just a spreadsheet or it's, is it in command? It's a big white sheet of paper before command. It was, oh. We had eEdge back at the time, mm -hmm. right? So it was just, But I just used this big white tablet because I'm like a paper person, like, I, you know. So I had who my clients were, who possible clients are from talking with them, like, you know, they're t thinking of buying or selling, you know, and are they A, B, or C clients, right? So I have that. If I worked with them, so then the following year would come, I would start that pipeline, and if I get work with them as a client, I cross their name off then, you know, and then I see at the end of the year who's left in, my, in that pipeline, and I write the new pipeline up and keep going down and, and fill more people in. So, okay, so... <laughs> That's confusing. I'm telling you, speaking Mary is hard. Yeah. <laughs> April, help me out here. Um, okay. 
Translate. Yeah. Well, like Translate. everyone, you can do it electronically, right? Yeah. Can, but for me, well, I turn to the that, right. Who's in the pipeline? Is this past, like, is Friends? This, people? Oh, okay, so it's your sphere. My sphere. Um, they might not be my sphere either. They might just be, you know, someone I met and we've talked about it and I just, like, I've gone on listing appointments with people that I didn't know and they still haven't listed, but they're still in my pipeline. You so know. are there pe are they people who have mentioned that they might be selling or buying? Yes. Okay, so like you just don't put some random person in your sphere well, no. on there unless I've specifically said, yes. oh, you know, maybe we're going to sell in the next couple or of years. Can you something. find me a lake home? Uh huh. Or keep, keep an eye out for some hunting land, you know? Okay. Like stuff like that. Because then I see it. I look to my right every day. It's sitting right there, and I see it. I'm like, oh, hunting. Oh, this hunting land just came up. He said he wanted me to keep them in mind. So uh -huh. otherwise, you know, I have to click back and forth with all the tabs and the computer, and this just takes too long, and something will get deleted that I don't want to get deleted. Yeah. And that's why I'm happy we have command, because you don't have to do that anymore. Right. But at the same time, you know. So how many people are on that list at any given time then, do you think, if you had to guess? Maybe 40 people. 40 people. Oh, OK. So they're so it's like your hot buyer list yeah. or hot seller list. Yeah, A, B, kind and of. C's. Some of them are uh -huh. C's, but they're C's just because they haven't found what they want yet. Uh huh. Not because. Right. You know, if if they would find what they want, they'd buy it tomorrow. Yeah. Type thing. And on those are are those people on a smart plan in command then? Yes. Okay, so a smart plan for those of you that aren't with KW is a is a campaign. It's some sort of campaign that you're running on them. Yes. Um. Okay. Don't ask me which one they're on. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's probably April's yeah. task. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is would you say, or maybe this is a question for April, is everyone in your database on some sort of campaign? Yes, they should be. Yes, they okay. are. Okay. So how I only have 421 people in my database. Okay. So what happens to the rest of them? Um, <laughs> I have some... I have some that are in my database that are, that are like orphan buyers and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't reach out to them, but I know that they're there. You know, and I kind of, I don't know, just kind of. Uh -huh. They're probably on keep, a smart plan. Keep it in the back of my mind. Um, I, if I meet if I meet them and I and I get their information and I'll get their information, they go on my database. But I will, I, or and I've also re taken people off, for various mm -hmm. reasons. Yeah. So, so like if you meet someone in an open house, let's say you and um, Sarah are doing an open house and a couple walks in and, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, what happens with them? I mean, you, you hopefully... They'll you, go on your pipeline report? Hopefully, they, yeah. Hopefully they put in the correct information and then they're on our pipeline, right? And yeah, you try and level and up on them. And just follow up. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And, and if, uh, if they convert into actually a buyer or a seller, then they go in, they go in the database as an SOI. Lead, okay. SOB. So what about someone, because I'm just thinking here, me, after 15 years, I have lots of people I met in open houses that are, you know, from 10 or 15 years ago. So how does that person, what happens with that person? Um, they'll still get, I'll still touch on them, okay. just not so as aggressively. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. I mean, I'm not going to let them forget me. Yeah. You know, so right. there's some way, some way, shape, or form, I'll still touch uh -huh. on them. Okay, but you're not calling them. Not on a consistent, consistently. No. Yeah, you don't really focus on that. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I always say I just either until they tell me to stop calling, or they buy, or they die. <laughs> it's like. I mean, they're going to be on a plan of some sort. It's the worst if you send something out when someone's dead. Yeah. That's kind of that is hard. Uh, That's happened to us a few times. <laughs> yeah. Every every campaign I have, every time I have an event, I'm like, I go through the list. I'm like, ooh, April, that, that person died. Uh -huh. They got divorced. This is, you know, yeah. like, it's, yeah. I know. So, that is tough, like, how to keep track of all that, too. Yeah, but be, uh -huh. do you have a question? So you've got, like, 400 people in your database, which is awesome. I'm jealous of that because we've got oodles. So, but so you don't you're not looking to have a thousand, two thousand, fifteen hundred people in your database. You want that four hundred or three hundred that you're going to personally touch mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Yeah, because I used to have like three, five thousand, whatever it was when I first started. How'd you how'd you 
whittle it down. Yeah, how'd you weed them out? I took about two and a half weeks in that December, it, when, and she just laid it all on a spreadsheet, and I'd, I'd start whittling, and there would still be peop too many people, then I'd whittle again, too yeah. many people. It was exhausting. So you eyeballed each one of them and made yeah. the information. Yeah, if I couldn't think of who their kids were or, or you know, know where they live, like off the top of my head, like stuff like that, they're not that close to me, right? Yeah. So not that you're best friends with 250, 350 people, um, but there's people you see a lot in your life, right? Like my kid's basketball team has been together, you know, she's going to be a freshman, and they've been together since they were in fourth grade, the same team. So they're on my SY. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where half of them lived. I had to look it up. You know, like some of them, but I see them all the time. Yeah. So we can put on our SOI until we have your name, your phone number, your email address, and your mailing address. So the database is going to be. It's going to be complete, and before every client event, I print off each agent's SOI and give it to them, and I highlight the pieces that they're missing, mm -hmm. and they don't get an invitation unless they're complete. I love that. Yeah, so they're not because in these SOI, are the people, okay. if you don't have that information, they're not in this, they shouldn't be in this they're, they're not, yeah. I mean, you're sort of, not to be cut throat, but like, they're not worth your time. Mm -hmm. Like, you only have so much time, so we don't have time to be trying to track down thousands of people. I'd rather, you know, focus on these 300 and have really close relationships with them, yeah. and then just work those. And nobody else really matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sometimes we just don't have it in there because we just forgot to add it or something. So usually we fill in most of those spots, you know, or it's a new buyer that we put on that you know we would want to work with again, and yeah. we might not have all their information written down yet, but we have it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that will happen too. Um, but yeah, I guess that's really a good valid point. How I decide we decide what's what. It's good. It, our our database, our health. I think our health score is like 89 or something like that. We're at 75. Oh, we're at 75. Nice thought, though. <laughs> I mean, that includes birthdays and, I mean, you know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot to get a 100% health score. Yeah, if you if you could take out all the other stuff, our health score for, like, the, for the sphere, yeah, would pro was probably close to 100% with what oh, we yeah, have in there. Just our sphere, for sure. Because we, we have, like, orphan buyers. We don't necessarily know their phone number, yeah. but we know what property they purchased, so not totally complete, but, you know, okay. they're in there. Mm -hmm. So it's address, phone number, email, and name, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. Birthdays. birthdays. And then birthdays we, probably. We work homes. hard on getting yeah. those, yeah. We've been more intentional about that. Yeah. So I have a question. Husband and wife, are they each their own separate record, or are they attached? No, they're attached. Okay. So, yeah, you could... Most of my sphere, you could double that if you have them. Uh -huh. They so become a separate getting, record if they're getting well, divorced. When they, when they, yeah, good point. Let me tell you. Yeah. So when you're, um, when you're emailing something to them, are they both getting the email then if they're attached? No. So how do you know which one to pick? Just the like, one I'm closer to. Okay. Mm -hmm. The one I'm more, most comfortable talking to. Yeah. Okay. You know, so. Uh huh. Okay. Um, let's see, I just had a thought that escaped me. Um, do you do like birthday cards, anniversary cards, things like that as a part of your, how many touches do you think your people get, your, you know, your 300 people get a year? 36 maybe? Oh, I was thinking closer to like 50 something. 50 something? Because we get, I mean, they do like, five or six touches for each event. We have three of those a year. They get a birthday card. Um, if they send a referral, they get something for that. Um, we send out a monthly newsletter. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's... Is it, email, is it an email newsletter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh -huh. So that's hard for me to answer these questions because I just do it automatically. And I don't, so I'm doing it not knowing I'm doing it uh -huh. half the time, right? Yeah. But like anything that happens, like I found out a friend of mine's dad passed away. I tell April, please send out a condolence. Our condolence card, uh -huh. right? Or if I, one of my sphere, if I see on um, Facebook or one of my past clients that just had a baby, send them a, you know, uh -huh. send them a card. Because I know what house they bought and they're going to be growing out of that house real yeah. fast. So, right. <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so one of my sphere just had twins. She was living in a town, she bought a town home. She already had another kid. I'm like, this is not going to work for them very much longer. Yeah. So you'll so. have to make a mm -hmm. mental note to follow up with them. Yeah. 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 So. 
Um, so yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm sure there's more than what I said. She obviously said there were, so. Yeah. Um, but I just do it automatically. I don't uh -huh. think about it, okay, I've touched this person this right. many times, right? Well, and if you figure, like the newsletter is 12 touches, you know, if they're mm -hmm. on the neighborhood nurture, that's another 12 emails. Mm -hmm. That's 24 emails right there a year. Yeah. So, and again, I don't know how many of you were in our um, team meeting yesterday, but like Dana was saying, when you think about 24 emails, that seems like a lot. And if you're with Amazon Prime, you're being touched six times a day. Mm -hmm. So think of it that way as like, we have FOMO when it comes to Amazon Prime. Yeah. Like I'm not deleting it. When I get the Maurice's text, I am not deleting that thing because some minute of my day, I might want to run over there and see what they have. <laughs> They're sending me something of value, of value right? Yeah. Well, it's the same goes for your newsletter, your neighborhood nurture. If it's of value to them, they're not going to... What I love about like the, the touch plan, and whether it's 36 or 56 or whatever, they're a cog in your wheel, and they don't know they're in your wheel. Yeah. Because everything just feels so automatic. They're getting your newsletter. They're getting their neighborhood nurture. They're getting invited to four events. They're getting a birthday card, anniversary card. It's all so natural. And as long as you're providing value, like who's going to unsubscribe from that? Right. Like. Right. And I think that's the other thing with me is I won't, I won't, um, I won't be who I'm not. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I was told I wouldn't be successful you know, seven and a half years ago, um, it was because I believe the, the line was, if you want to be a millionaire real estate agent, you have to dress like a millionaire real estate agent. And so the first six months, I mean, I had a couple of closings and I was dressing up, you know, doing what I had to do, wearing skirts, to, you know, and this and that. And you, you end up at a, you end up at a, you know, a listing where you don't want to take your shoes off. You know, and you're like, you know, oh, but, yeah. I, but here I am in, you know, mm -hmm. a skirt, right, or something. I mean, it's, it wasn't me. So mm -hmm. I peeled that layer of fake off and just kind of became me. So I think it comes out with everything else I do, too. It's just, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. People know what to expect when they work with you. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, I think you're, and I think we all, like, attract who we are. Right. Sort of, you know, yep. but I know what you're saying. Like I've showed up at a listing appointment in a skirt and high heels and the guy's like, oh, I was going to take you on the four wheeler to show you the property, but 